Hi guys! Today I want to share with you a little bit about some of my materials. Um, some of these tools that I use for drawing with pen and ink and other stuff. And I also want to share with you this booklet that just arrived from the printers. So let me show you this first before I get down to the tools. This is a little sketch booklet, my latest one that just came from the printers. It's called Wayfarers from the Sketchbook, and it contains all the concept art that went into the most recent Kickstarter that um, was created for the miniature line that Dark Sword, Dark Sword Miniatures does of my artwork. And I had posted some of these images on my social media, and people were expressing interest in having a collection of them. They are kind of going back to my illustration, my artist, artist illustrator roots of doing uh, role, playing, role playing game type artwork because that was what I really started off with back when I first set out through the gates into the big wide world of professional illustration. I was doing a lot of work for RPG game companies and this project in particular was kind of fun for me because it gave me a chance to go back to doing that uh, and in, in a way that was my vision still. And it also results in some really cool little miniatures that Dark Sword Miniatures creates, which is an added bonus because I used to love painting those things when I was a kid. And I would have been over the moon if someone had told me back then that one day I would see my own art in miniatures format. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's what this booklet is. And you can find that on my website at shadowscapes.com. Now, that aside, I want to show you some of the original art that went into it as well. This is the original watercolor painting. Pretty straightforward watercolors. A lot of Daniel Smith pigments, which causes this nice granulation texture that happens in the background. If you get a little closer, you can see that. And the, the drawings themselves were done on this toned brown paper. I believe it was Strathmore, although I'm not quite certain on that. I don't have the pad any longer. I think I used the entire pad for this. And it's, it's a cold press. It's got a little bit of a tooth to it, a little bit of texture. And on it, I worked with this Pentel art brush. This is a brush pen, and I love this brand because it has this wonderful, nice, fine point tip. And it, it's fun to draw with because it allows you to get variation of your line quality. You don't just have a single thickness of your line, but you can get wider and thinner and you can do some shading if you do very lightly because, as I said, this paper has a little bit of tooth. So if I get the brush really dry of the ink, then I can do some shading, which is what I did over here in the leg area. Um, this is, they are supposedly disposable, but they also have refillable ink cartridges that you can buy. And I've refilled these many times and I've still never had to dispose of one of these due to the tip getting uh, not so sharp or not so not so pointed, which is amazing to me because they are synthetic fibers and I've never had any of my watercolor brushes last this long. So these guys, these guys are really great. This color is steel blue. I decided to use that because I thought it would be a nice contrast to the brown tone of the paper that I had on these drawings. And it does give a very good contrast. So rather than using black or gray, gray is another color that I really like using these brush pens for, as well as sepia. So the other, one of the other tools that I used over the course of these drawings would be for the white. Now working with the brown, I was able to go back into the shadows as well as pulling forward highlights. And to do that, I used, sometimes I use this gel pen. This is a Uniball Signo. This is my favorite brand for white gel pens. A lot of other brands I've discovered over the years, they clog easily, so you end up using maybe half of the ink before you can't use them any longer, or you run into other problems like they're not they're not quite opaque enough. This 
This one, this, this pen is, it's a medium opacity. And when I want something that's really, really white for some extra punch, something that's gonna be really nice and bright without any sort of transparency to it, then I switch over to using this one, which is also Uniball Signo UM153. And it's got a slightly larger tip, larger point, you can see that. And it is much more opaque as well. So I use a combination of these two. And again, this is another one which is excellent in that it does not clog and you get the full use of all the ink before you have to get a new one. And the other white tool is this Caran d'Ache white pencil. And I use that to do some of the more lighter shading. And you see a little bit on her, on her belly over here and her legs in a few of the places on this hound. You could see it on the chest where I didn't want a really harsh, hard white edge. Then I use this white colored pencil. And again, this is where the tooth of the paper really comes in nicely and allows you to get that softer look. A really smooth paper would not allow you to do that. And you'd have to be have to have a very gradated look when you were shading. And finally, one other, one other thing that I used was this gold pigment. It's not real gold. It is some kind of paint. It's Japanese in origin. That's about all I can tell you, unless someone can read that there, because there is really no branding label on here. I got it at my local Dick Blick store and it comes in this little porcelain dish. It's a very thin layer of gold pigment that you just use as you would watercolors. So you just wet your brush, dip it in there, and then you can paint with it. So there you go. That's a little bit of insight into some of the tools that I use and some of the things that I like playing around with. And again, there's the Wayfarer's book. Thanks for watching.